the next sense organ that we are taking up, that is the fourth one, are photoreceptors. Photoreceptors are actually with the ones which are for vision and the organ is the eye. Now, let us first talk about location, size, shape of the eye and then we'll see certain structures which protect the eye and then the structure of the eye actually. Now, location, these eyes are located in orbits. Orbits are sockets in the skull where these eyes are placed. Each eye is about 2.5 centimeters in diameter and it weighs, single eye weighs about 7 grams. So the two eyes which are present in human beings, our eyes are forwardly directed, they are present in the front and that is why we have binocular vision. So our vision is called binocular vision and binocular vision actually helps us getting this 3D perception. So this is actually 3D vision and we are able to get this 3D vision which we call binocular vision only when we are using both our eyes and that is why many a times uh, during some, some activities we try to close one of the eye and have a perception of the depth like a simple activity which all of us do is by closing an eye and then joining these two fingers. So when we have both the eyes open and we are seeing it, we can straight away join it. But if you keep one eye closed like this, then probably it goes like front and back. Because when both the eyes are working, we are get, getting a perception of depth. That is the 3D vision. But with one eye, that 3D perception is lost. So that is called binocular vision. Now how is the eye protected? So let us first talk about the protection. We have seen the location in the orbits and size weight also. Now how are our eyes protected? Now before we actually see the structures which protect, let us draw a simple structure of the eye that we are able to see. This area which is towards our nose, this side, is known as canthus. And say this is the upper eyelid, lower eyelid and here the eyebrows are present. Eyebrows are on the supraorbital ridge. Now what all structures are protecting? So first structure which protects are eyebrows. Eyebrows have a layer or a few rows of hair and they protect from dust and some kind of uh, particles, bacteria coming. We don't get to see that much of protection but if you've seen eyes of camels, the eyebrows, the hair of the eyebrows are very long and they actually come in front of the eye because they are in the desert region due to sand storms. Those sand particles when they hit their eyes, this hair of eyebrows, they actually come in front of the eye protecting the eyes. So there its effect is more uh, visible. In our case, these eyebrows are there and the function is protection. The next structure Eyelashes. Eyelashes are again hair which are present on the eyelids. So here there are these hair which are going to protect the eye. So these are eyelashes. Again the function is same, it is going to protect. Plus one more very important thing. There are certain glands which open at the base of these hair. Suppose this is the follicle and here is the hair of say the eyelash. So 
a gland called meibomian gland it opens here so this is the opening of meibomian gland meibomian gland is modified oil gland that means they they would secrete this oil and this oil would come here so when these at the base the meibomian glands they secrete oil this oil spreads on the eye so it helps in proper frictionless movement of eyelids that is the function of meibomian glands they open at the base of the follicle of the eye lashes the next structure which is protecting our eyelids we have three eyelids per eye out of which two are functional one is reduced the reduced one this area is called canthus this reduced one which is here near the canthus is known as nictitating membrane nictitating membrane in case of humans it is vestigial it is vestigial but in organisms which are aquatic or the organisms which are in the air like birds this is a functional membrane so what happens in those organisms when they are flying hit uh, the air can hit their eyes and the particles in the air can damage their eyes so this nictitating membrane which is a transparent membrane it covers the eye so they are able to see without any problem and there is an extra protection also same is the case with the aquatic animals in our case this is vestigial upper eyelid lower eyelid these are functional eyelids so there are two functional eyelids and one vestigial that is nictitating membrane this is again for protect protection so when we blink this eyelids they perform many functions they are spreading this oil so that there is a uh, proper spreading of oil and without uh, friction movement plus they would also help in spreading of tears which is the next protective structure so a uh, uh, structure or uh, the substance so the fourth thing that helps in protection are lacrimal glands lacrimal or tear glands lacrimal glands are present on the outer side of the eye this is called the canthus side and this is the outer side so on the outer side if you are looking at our eye somewhere here inside the orbit are present these glands they are almond shaped glands and this is lacrimal gland so each eye has one so we say we have a pair of lacrimal glands one associated with each eye and the secretion is directly poured here with the help of these lacrimal ducts so now the tear the secretion it comes here and it spreads when the eyelids or when we blink so these gland these sorry these ducts are lacrimal ducts now the tears which is also known as lacrimal secretion when the tears come here their function so they secrete oh, sorry not this the gland secretes tears what are the functions done by tears number 1 it has lysozyme lysozyme is a bactericidal substance bactericidal substance so it protects our eyes because it is going to kill those bacteria in case if they come to the eye plus it is going to provide nourishment nourishment to cornea 
when we see the detailed structure of eye, we will understand where this cornea is. Now, when the tears are continuously produced, what happens? Where do they go? They are drained by two ducts. So here, let me erase this canthus part here because I'm going to draw a sac-like structure. This is the sac-like structure. I'm erasing this nictitating membrane from here and I would label it somewhere else. This is nictitating membrane. Now I'm drawing a sac-like structure. This sac has two openings which are going to collect the secretion that is tears from the eye. One is from the upper part and one is from the lower part and they are known as superior and inferior canaliculi. So this is lacrimal sac. This duct which is collecting the tears is known as superior canaliculus and the lower one would be called inferior canaliculus and all those extra tears all that extra secretion is collected or drained by these two ducts it comes into this sac like structure and this tube which is there it is known as nasolacrimal duct. It opens, this opens in nose. So all those extra tears which are produced, they are drained by these two ducts and finally it goes into the nose and we swallow it. How do we detect that this connection is there? Whenever we put some kind of eye drops, we start tasting it. So from eyes through the nose, it has come to our buccal cavity. And as soon as it comes in contact with the tongue, depending upon which chemical it has, and as we wrote in case of gastatoreceptors, that most of the drugs, they have bitter taste. So we are able to detect that. So there is a connection here. All those extra secretions are drained. Now, when do we start seeing tears trickling down on the cheeks? That is when lacrimal glands are stimulated or overstimulated. The production of secretion, that is tears, increases beyond normal. Normal is like continuously tears are produced. So basically we are crying all the time. But when do we see it? When we see those tears trickling down our cheeks. So that is when this gland gets stimulated, overstimulated, it could be because of any kind of sensation, any kind of emotion, then the secretion is more. Draining is taking place, but draining is going to take place at its own pace. All that extra secretion is going to come down on the cheeks. And here is what we see when we draw our eye in detail. So, what we have seen so far is the location, size, weight of each eye and what are those things which are protecting it. One more structure which protects is every eyeball is surrounded by adipose tissue. So the fifth thing that we will write is adipose tissue around eyeball. So these are five things which protect our eyes out of which in case of human beings the role of eyebrows is not that prominent but eyelashes protect us there are certain glands their secretions protect us eyelids protect us or our eyes and lacrimal glands also because their secretion tears it contains a bactericidal substance plus it is provide, going to provide nourishment also there are two more glands which are present on the eyelids. So these glands on eyelid, actually they are present on eyelid edge. So on the edge of the eyelid, these are called gland of Z's and second is gland of 
more. The gland of Z's, whenever it gets infected by bacteria, that results into, uh, let me write it here, bacterial infection of gland of Z's results into sty. Sty is that swelling in the eyelid which is very painful and that is when the gland of Z's gets infected by bacteria. But basically all these glands they produce secretions which keep the eyes moist and help in proper movement of the eyelids. So this is the structure that we uh, see from outside what is visible to us. Now, in the next part, we will take up the structure of the actual eye or eyeball.